Hello everyone, I'm here with John Pardy, who for those of you that don't know him, he won Big Brother Canada back in season two and he's now made the transition into poker. How you doing, John? I'm doing great, Oliver. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. And I brought you on today because I want to talk a little bit about you and your sort of transition into poker. Can you let us know how you sort of did that from Big Brother Canada? Yeah, it's been a bit of a wild journey. Uh, my whole life I was an aspiring hockey player. Uh, that's what I did. That was my passion. Those are my goals. And then uh, a few shoulder surgeries later, I uh, saw that dream come to an end. Um, so then I was lucky enough to be, it was actually my little sister's birthday, and she was a huge fan of Big Brother Canada, so she said, listen, for my birthday, can you please just send in a videotape, an audition? And I was like, well, it's the cheapest birthday gift I'm ever going to give you, so heck yeah, let's do it. So I ended up getting on the show and ended up actually winning it, and um, throughout that show, uh, Arlie Shaban, another uh, great poker player, Twitch streamer, uh, was actually in the house with me as well. I actually evicted him, but you know, it's, uh, we're still buddies. We'll keep we, that quiet, right? <laughs> yeah, cut that way. <laughs> and uh, so we actually lived together for a little while after the show, and he's been in the poker for ages. So living with him was the first time I ever got uh, introduced to poker. I just ended up having a big bankroll after winning Big Brother Canada, so we blew a few thousand in the old. <laughs> Not like me, I deposited twenty dollars. Like you yeah. got a few thousand to punt yeah, away. Was that was quite nice. I was playing like one hundred nines and stuff. Never playing a game in my life. And Arlie was like, I don't know if you should be doing this. So yeah, but we uh, we reeled it in pretty quick, and then I definitely got a little bit intrigued with the game and decided that this is something that we wanted to pursue uh, for a career or a job in the short term for sure. Fantastic, and I know that you've been playing quite a lot this summer, and I saw that you had a pretty deep run in the Golden Nugget tournament this summer. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Ah, uh, still hurts to talk yeah. about Oliver. It still hurts. <laughs> we had uh, it was a good run. It's probably my fifth uh, fifth ever live tournament I've ever played. Uh, the two hundred dollar buy in, two hundred and fifty k at the Golden Nugget. Uh, we ended up making the final table. Came in the final table, I would say third, second or third in chips okay. uh, with ten left and ended up with a string of very unfortunate events, ended up getting 10th. Uh, but it was still my biggest cash. We cashed for like 3.2K. That was my biggest cash that I've had online or live ever. So it was definitely, definitely puts your mind at ease and lets you know that you're kind of on the right trajectory, right? Absolutely, and it was a quite a big field, am I right? How, how many people actually yeah, played in it? I think there was like 3,300, 3,400, so it was... So a, you made a final table out of that many people, that's it was good. A, it was a battle. It's good to, I suppose it's good for that kind of thing to happen at the beginning of the trip. Did it fill you with a bit more confidence for the, for the rest of the trip now that you've kind of had that deep run? Now, to be honest, I haven't played live poker since that. Oh, really? okay. <laughs> so today now will be the first time getting back into the live scene. I had my girlfriend come down for a little bit. We spent a few days with her and then decided I just wanted to grind on the Twitch streets for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we've been doing for the past week, week and a half. But now we're ready to end kind of strong and get a few events under the belt again. Perfect. Right. Next thing I want to talk about is a little bit about sort of who you play for. So there's a, there's a team, right? Squad. That's called a squad, squad called squad. the Thirst Lounge, <laughs> who's run by Bill Perkins. And for the viewers that sort of don't know what the Thirst Lounge is, can you give us a quick breakdown of what that team is? Yeah, so Bill Perkins has a Twitch channel and he uh, called it the Thirst Lounge. Uh, obviously, Bill's a very busy man, has a lot going on, and couldn't dedicate the time that he felt that he wanted to or needed to to keep the channel going. So, what he decided to do, he put in a contest to find a new host. Um, we sent in a video, or a bunch of people sent in videos uh, just to audition for it more so. And it went from, I think he decided it was supposed to be one host, then he went to like three hosts, yeah. and it was like six hosts, and then he was like, you know what, screw it, we're doing 10, the Thirst Lounge 10. Uh, so he picked 10 people to come down to the Virgin Islands, uh, live in his estate that he has down there, have access to his yacht. Uh, he gave us a $10,000 staking deal okay. um, out of his pocket, and then Party Poker came along as well and gave us an additional right. 10K. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much the whole premise. We're, we're a content creating, poker playing channel. You know, we just, we just enjoy keeping the vibes good. We enjoy having a good time. So I'm having a lot of fun with it for sure. So you mentioned a little bit about the stake that you get 20,000. Yeah. What sort of happens at the end? Do you split the profits or how does it work? So it is, so everything over 10K is yeah. going to be split. Okay. Um, that's on Bill's side. Mm -hmm. And everything over the 10K and the party poker is going to be split as well between us and Bill. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so we... I, I guess right now, obviously, a few, a few are down, a few yeah. are up, but at the end of the year, we made a, uh, a deal with Bill where if we stream so many hours and play through so much of the stake, that at the end of the year, we will keep any of the remaining stake. Ah, that's quite new. I didn't know that. That's really yeah, good. That's so really Bill, nice. Uh, and that was almost Bill just kind of 
throwing at us, like, you know, I appreciate you guys, what you're yeah. doing for the channel. He's like, if you guys work hard enough, there's going to be a reward at the end. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I suppose it incentivizes the players that are losing quite a bit right now that, you know, to keep playing so they can get their hours in and they might still be able to take some money home out of this, the whole thing. Yeah. 100%. And he also got us, like, he's given us every every resource to to start becoming profitable. Like, he gave us the Raise Your Edge course, yeah. like, access to Elliot Rowe. Like, it's just been a... So everyone who was on the trajectory of this, definitely now we're starting to see them come back or even at least start breaking even and on the way back up. Great, okay. And I know as well that there was recently a, com a new competition yes. to find another host because one of the hosts left, is that yep. right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that competition, sort of how many people entered, what was the, what did people have to do to try and become the next Thirst Lounge host? So we had, obviously the Thirst Lounge is not going to be for everyone. It's uh, well, even living with me alone for an extended <laughs> period of time is not going to be for everybody. But you know, people, uh, we knew this was going to happen at the beginning. There's going to be people coming in, people coming out, but Bill's very stuck on the Thirst Lounge 10. He wants to keep 10. He wants to help as many people or change as many lives or help people's lives as much as he can. Um, so he put out, once we had a uh, cat drop from the Thirst Lounge, he said, you know what, we're not going to be TL9, let's go TL10. It's kind of the same premise as what he initially did for the 10. Uh, people put in videos, there's a lot of good videos. Yeah, I put in a video. In fact, I'll probably do some selfish, uh, shame, shameful plugging here. Here's my video. You can watch my video. It's only a minute long. Enjoy it. What is optimal for me in my life? What do I really want? Right. What is the optimal path to get what I want? And final question, Oliver. Why should you be the next Thirst Lounge 10 host? I like to have fun, uh, I have tons of energy, uh, I love to travel, I have a real thirst for playing poker. Oh, actually, let me just show you. Look at this, a bold four bet from Biles. He ain't gonna be pushed around. Is that your final answer, Oliver? Yes. Ollie! Ollie! Ollie, wake up! Did I win? Did I win? Did you win what? Come on, let's go. So yeah, I entered a video. Unfortunately, I didn't get picked, but you did pick two new members of the Thirst Lounge, which I think were very, very well deserving. Can you tell us about those two new uh, Yes, we people? have uh, Poker Mama and Payday. Uh, Payday's name is actually Adam, but Payday through his whole uh, social media presence and uh, poker presence. Um, but we definitely, I think we picked two, two great people, two people who are really excited to get down to the island, uh, put in the work that's necessary, create the content that's necessary, and, and honestly, just enjoy and appreciate the whole experience that is the Thirst Lounge. Great, and finally, I just want to know, sort of over the 10 players, are you up or down for the first lounge? Are you guys winning or are you losing at the moment? Now, I think overall, I do believe that majority of the people are down, right. but we've had this one guy, Drew, who's up like 82K or something, so he's he's carrying the squad on his back right now. But uh, He's the first lounge saver, right? He is. He's just the first lounge. He's <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks very much for coming on, John. It's been a pleasure chatting to you. I'm Oliver Biles for PokerNews.com.